Hello everybody, welcome back to part 4 on Torix. Uh Today we're going to be looking at uh, the Catalan numbers. And so first, I want to start off with another grid walking problem. So now we're walking from this point to this point. Again, we can only use uh, right and up moves. However, our path must stay under this line, or we can touch it. So a valid path would be like up, or right up, right, right, up, right, right, up, up, up. So this is a valid path. It can touch the line, but it can't go above it. So if we went right, right, up, 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 right, up, right, right, this is not a valid path. We don't want to include this because it we we go through um, this line. So we just like with the other grid walking problems, we want a smart way to count these um, these paths that uh, stay under this line. Well, also like before, we can try counting the complement. Maybe it's easier to count paths that go through the line because we know that for any path that goes above this line, and we can say like on a coordinate grid, if we call this the origin, this is 0, 0, and well, let's say this is 5, 5, then um, then we know that our path has to pass through um, this line which is the line um, oops, sorry oh my goodness the line hmm, y equals x plus 1 So as we can see here, uh, this path that I was I was drawing, and this other path, they both hit this line. Now that is to say, they could also just intersect it, but they have to hit it at some point. So let's say we call the first point that or first of all let's call these paths that don't stay in this region because we're trying to count the number of paths that stay in this region so let's call the number of paths that don't stay in the region let's call these bad paths and we know that the total number of paths um, from the last video is just 10 choose 5 so if we have a bad path, it has to hit um, the line y equals x plus 1 at some point p. And it can hit it at multiple, po uh, multiple, multiple points in the line. But let's say the first point where a bad path intersects the line y equals x plus 1 is p. Then what we will do is we'll reflect the portion a different color. The portion of the path, of the bad path, from the origin to P, we reflect that across uh, the origin. Or, sorry, across the line y equals x plus 1. So I'm taking this, or sorry, really, um, it should start, oops. Uh, it should start here. It goes like that. So here I've reflected it across the line y equals x plus 1. And now if we continue this bad path all the way to our point, it looks like it's just a normal grid walk from this point to this point. 
it's pretty easy to see that any bad path, once we reflect it, um, since any bad path has to start at the origin, any of these paths will always start at this point, which is the origin reflected across y equals x plus 1. And this is also the point negative 1, comma 1. So perhaps there's a bijection here. Every bad path, let's say this bad path, if we reflect it, we get this. And then it goes up like that. So we say that we have a bijection between bad paths and the, the grid walks from negative 1 comma 1 to 5 comma 5. And I won't go through all the details of the bijection, I, but I encourage you to think about why any bad path must have a corresponding path, or it must have a corresponding one of these grid walks, and why any of these grid walks must have a corresponding um, bad path. So now we can count the number of bad paths by noticing that it's the same as a grid walk from the origin to 6 comma 4 and so that would just be 10 choose 4 ways. So if we subtract the total number of paths minus the bad paths then we get our so-called good paths which are the paths that stay within the region bounded by y equals x. And now I'm not going to go through the computation here. Instead, I'm going to look at a general case where we have an n by n grid and we're looking at the number of good paths. Then our first binomial coefficient will be 2n choose n and our second one will be well if we're going from negative 1 comma 1 to n n then um, this will also be 2 n choose n minus 1. You could also say n plus 1 it doesn't matter because the binomial coefficients are symmetric. And so now we can compute this notice that we have uh, 2n factorial divided by n factorial n factorial and then here we have also 2n factorial divided by n minus 1 factorial times n plus 1 factorial. And here we can rearrange this as n plus 1 times. Um, so n factorial, or n plus 1 factorial, is equal to n factorial times n plus 1 and n minus 1 factorial is equal to n factorial divided by n. So in this denominator we get n plus 1 over n times n factorial times n factorial. So now we can factor out 2n factorial over n factorial times n factorial because we have that in both of these expressions. But that's just 2n choose n. So really we're factoring, factoring out 2n choose n and then 1 minus 1 over 
n plus 1 over n. And now, so we can just flip this fraction, and um, I'm just going to erase to save time. And we get n over n plus 1. And so that just simplifies to 1 over n plus 1 times 2n, um, sorry, choose n. And this is what we will define as the nth Catalan number. Now, of course, this isn't everything to know about the Catalan numbers, um, but there are a few types of sort of bijectiony questions that can also be answered by the Catalan numbers. One typical example is for sorting parentheses. If you have n sets of parentheses, and you want to know the number of ways you can arrange those parentheses such that they're all opened and closed um, correctly. It's like this one would be an example. Um, I hope, yeah. Um, the, the number of ways to arrange the n sets parentheses is the nth Catalan number. And um, I won't show that in this video because I want to keep it sort of short and just stay on the topic of grid walking for this uh, example. But just to let you know, there are many more applications of the Catalan numbers, and they're all, they're all good uh, examples if you want to learn about how to use bijections and counting problems. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.